Hey, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for being with me. I have to be honest, I don't shoot a lot of solo podcast episodes, but lately I've just really felt called to show up for you and to share some things right now as we're heading into some uncertain times. I know in the conversations that we're having with clients and even my peers, you know, it seems like we're feeling our way through a dark room right now. And I don't think we need to be scared. As entrepreneurs, I think we need to be prepared. And so it is my hope today that I can just, you know, shed some light and some inspiration through my own experience, having gone through a recession back in 2008. And as we're heading into whatever is ahead, I really want to arm you uh, with the tools and the mindset to know that you are capable of anything that you want to achieve, that we are nothing right, but human potential. And each and every day we get to make choices that help us step into our vision in a greater way. And as a female entrepreneur, I just want to take a second and give you lots of love and tell you, you know, how special you are. And I know, cause I've been an entrepreneur now for almost 25 years, that it's not an easy journey and it truly is the path less traveled. And with that comes challenges that maybe your friends and your family don't understand comes a sense of pressure. And, you know, I know when I was recently asked in an interview, like, what am I most scared of? It was that I, I wasn't going to live up to my highest potential. And maybe deep down, that's a fear for you too, that, you know, what would happen if your life ended tomorrow? Like, do you feel that you played full out, that you used your gifts and talents to the best and highest use possible, and you made the impact you feel called to make? And to me, that really is what we do at Inspired Living, is we help you align with your highest and truest calling, your gifts, and we create strategy around those so you can truly live you know, the most inspired life possible, but that doesn't mean there aren't challenges. And if you don't know my story, I want to take you back just a little bit. And then I want to share with you kind of some tips to help you through whatever season it is that you are in right now. So I started my first business when I was 23. It was an interior design business. And at that time I had come back from college uh, to be with my parents who were going through a divorce. I am the middle child and there was a lot of codependency growing up and I knew that I wanted to be there for my family. So I left a school I had a full scholarship for and came home to be with my family and, and just help them through that transition. And I knew I needed a job. Now I was in and out of college throughout this time, um, but I'm like, I need to work. And so I reached out to um, a lady that owned a talent agency that I went through as a little girl and had a little performing arts center and I asked her for a job and she said, absolutely, Carrie, come on in. And so for five years, I worked in that agency learning all the roles um, and really understanding like her vision and what she had created. So fast forward, I didn't want to be employed anymore. I'm like, okay, I've reached a ceiling. Maybe you feel that way. There's nowhere for me to go. I'm feeling like the need to do something else. And so I went to a trade school for interior design. My best friend had just gone through it. And I'm like, that seems really fun. And so I quit the job. I actually got a job at a furniture store for eight months to get clients. And then I had a full roster of clients, quit that job at the furniture store and had my interior design business for five years. And I remember that time so well. This is pre-website, pre-social media, but I was the local interior design expert on our morning show. And I was still doing commercials. Like even back then I was using video to grow my business. I just wasn't aware of the strategy I was using at the time. So I had that business for about five years and I got that feeling again. I have like a five year itch where I was like, mm, I'm working for myself, by myself. I felt lonely. And I don't know if you're in a place where you can relate to that, especially over the last couple of years where, you know, we've been home, we haven't been traveling as much. Running a business can feel really isolating. It can feel super, super lonely. And I remember feeling that way at this time, I'm 27 and I just knew, I just knew that there was something greater for me. And so one day my mom calls me and she says, Carrie, there's a modeling agency for sale. 
And I said, oh, mom, that sounds great. But if I was to ever own an agency, I would want to develop actors. One of my gifts from as long as I can remember is seeing talent in people. It is actually the thing that I love the most about my job is that I see potential, I see opportunity, and I get so excited about it. And I think it's what my clients love about me too, is that I help you see outside of the box that you live in. Like, what if? Like, can you imagine? So she said, okay, let me call on it and I'll call you right back. She calls me back five minutes later and she says, Carrie, you won't believe who it is. And I said, it's Carol, isn't it? Now, Carol is a lady I worked for for five years out of college and went through her agency as a little girl. And so my mom and I went and had a meeting with her. And a month later, I was the owner of an agency. I'm 27. My mom and I both put in $15,000, which at that time was so much money for me. And I think it's so important to understand risk reward. You know, when you want something, are you, are you willing to go all in and do whatever it takes? And so I put the money down on the table and um, I took over the agency. And now I look back at that time <laughs> and I have to chuckle because I was so naive. I mean, I knew her business because I worked in it, but I had never owned a business, right? So at 27, there's a little more ego than knowledge. <laughs> But I got the agency from doing, you know, just a little over six figures to almost seven when the 2008 recession hits. Now, recessions, like what are they and, and how do you work through them, right? It's a downturn in economy. However, more millionaires and billionaires are created during a recession than, than any other time. It's not a time to be scared. It's a time to be prepared. But I had no mentors. I had no coaches. I was running this agency on steam. I was literally, you know, kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul. I had not paid myself for over a year. And I woke up one day. It felt like one day, although it wasn't. And I was forced to close it. And I have to tell you, I remember that moment like yesterday. I mean, it was over 12 years ago. And if you've gone through any sort of traumatic experience, I know um, that we can go right back there, right? And experience the feelings. And this is why doing the inner work is so important to work through some of those traumas. But I remember sending out an email, it was December 8th, 2008, to all of my vendors, all of my talent, my employees. And I gotta tell you, I was devastated. I had nothing, I had short sold my home. A few years before that, I had gone through a divorce. So here I am, 33, uh, I have nothing. And it, it also brings me back to a quote I hear from our uh, media coach, Rich Keller, and he says, you are not what you do, what you do impacts who you are. And at that time in my life, the agency really was who I was. I let it become my identity, like Carrie without the agency, who was that? And so it took me a few years to figure that out. And I went through a lot of personal development. I went through, you know, neuro-linguistic training. I became a trainer for a personal development company. I went through like a landmark. I went through like Tony Robbins stuff. And I found, I found myself again. And with that came a new sense of optimism and confidence. And after a year long journey of being an NLP practitioner and um, a coach, I found myself in a place where Inspired Living was born. And at that time, Inspired Living was more of a lifestyle brand. It was more life coaching. And I realized that was not what I wanted to be when I grew up. Like, I do not want to be a therapist. I was doing a lot of life coaching. And I had the aha moment a few years in to specialize in video. And I've been teaching entrepreneurs how to show up authentically on camera and use video to grow and scale their business now for over a decade. What is the purpose of me telling you this story? It is because sometimes we have to lose it all to be able to reimagine a new possibility that we often identify ourselves to and with our businesses and we don't know who we are without them. And so I have learned throughout the years that inspired living is an expression of who I am, but it is not who I am. I, I am an inspirer. I am a mother. I am a daughter. I am a friend. I am a lover. I am a cheerleader. I, I am so many things. I'm a community builder and inspired living is the vehicle right now that I have to embrace those core values. So as you're heading into this season, I really want to prepare you because looking back, at that moment in time, I so wish I knew what I knew now. 
I so wish I had mentors and a community that I could draw from their, their knowledge and their expertise, because you've heard it probably a million times without a plan, you plan to fail. And yet so many entrepreneurs fail, right? Four out of five businesses don't make it past five years. Less than 12% of women owned businesses generate over six figures and less than 2% over seven. Not okay. Not okay in my book. And I hope it's not okay in yours. So a couple pieces of advice I want to share with you today. And that is this, that you are capable of achieving anything that you see for your life, whether it be love, freedom, finances, like it's all there for you. There's, there's nothing that is there for some and not there for others, but what makes it, what is it that some people, you know, are able to generate incredible amounts of money and have this level of success while others don't. And I'm going to tell you what I have learned over the years to believe. First of all, it is, you can't achieve what you don't believe. And oftentimes we see a vision for our life where we say, I want to make a million dollars, or I want to reach seven figures, or I want to go, you know, play with Oprah and Richard Branson projecting my dream right now. But we don't feel like there's something within us that is out of alignment with that. We don't feel like it's really possible. We have a money story. We have a belief story. We're carrying these beliefs around with us that keep us subconsciously from being able to step into that vision. And so I am such a strong believer that the inner work creates the outer work, that if you want to live a certain life, you have to ask yourself, how am I showing up? Who am I being? Who am I surrounding myself with? What am I learning that allows me to become that person? CEOs, influencers, like celebrities, they aren't made overnight. You've all heard, right? 10,000 hours, right? It takes someone 10 years to become an overnight success. And so it's going back to what is your vision? And have you taken time to really think about what it is that you really want? See, over the last couple of years, I had a baby in 2020. We've been running and growing and scaling inspired living. And sometimes I feel like I'm just on this perpetual hamster wheel. Yeah, I have my clients who broke down in tears, you know, feeling that way that you're just you're just going between family and business and life. There is no room to breathe. And I have learned the hard way and I'm still learning it. Let me tell you that without space, you can't create like without space. You can't dream. You can't learn. You can't implement. So if you're always running on this hamster wheel, you might be getting some shit done, right? You might be getting stuff done but you may not be feeling fulfilled. You may not be running in the right direction. You're just running. So I really encourage you to create space. And this isn't an hour. This is like days. Like give yourself a day or two a month where you have nothing on your calendar and you can vision board, you can set intentions, you can strategize, you can take a class, you can do things that will allow you to develop into the CEO, the visionary that can bring that dream to life. It is so important that you take time for you. And this isn't about a manicure and a haircut. That's not time for you. I'm talking about like real space to create, to make sure you're running in the right direction and to set those goals for where you want to go next. So important. Number one, number two, one of the things that has been a game changer for me in my life is aligning myself with other women that are big dreamers, other women that are building seven, eight, nine figure businesses, women that are doing things that I am dreaming of doing. Because if you're surrounding yourself with people that are telling you, are you crazy? You can't do that. Or you feel like you can't share with them your deepest dreams, or you can't share with them your big financial wins. That's a, that's a sad place to be in. But when you have a community of luminary leaders that you can tap into and say, Hey, like something's coming up down my pipeline or the recession's coming up, or how do I do this? I want to sell my business. I need support with team. I need to, you know, fix my revenue model, whatever it might be. Where do you go right now to get those answers? And I mean it like, where do you go? 
And oftentimes it's not just one business coach that has all the answers. I have a business coach. I will never not have a business coach. But for me, one of the biggest advantages of community is having, you know, the, the mastermind, the mindsets of many in many different areas of expertise that you can draw on, right, for resources, for guidance. And so if you've been in a silo working for yourself by yourself, that you have a much bigger vision for your life, I can't encourage you enough to get out of that silo, to get out, to get on a plane, to do whatever it takes to get into a room of other women that are doing what you aspire to do. Yes, I will tell you, you feel like I can't leave my family, it's too expensive, I don't have the time. But millionaires know that time is money and how you spend your time is the most important decision you will make every day because it is the one thing that we all have the same amount of. And it is how you use it that truly affects your happiness, your finances, your relationships. So I encourage you to not make time the excuse, but to make it your champion, right? And to use your time in a way that is productive, that is bringing joy, that is using your gifts, and that is creating community. Because there is nothing that will help you grow a business more than aligning yourself with other people that can support you in getting there. So I wanna invite you to find your community. If you don't have one, I invite you to come to the Brilliant event. Now this event I have hosted now for I think six or seven years, time goes by so fast. And I remember I put this event together because I was having these really intimate, heartfelt conversations with my girlfriends over a glass of wine about their businesses, about everything from team, from people, um, stealing from them, from lawsuits, like all the stuff you don't hear about on social media. These were the conversations I was having with my girlfriends, how to get a patent, how to sell your business, how to hire the right person, how to build your executive team, like how to create, you know, multiple seven figures in your business. Like those are the things that I wanted to learn. And I had this, I had this epiphany one day and I was like, why am I the one having these conversations over a glass of wine with my girlfriend? And why aren't we bringing these conversations to more women? And that's where Brilliant was born. Brilliant isn't just about strategy. Brilliant is about creating that space for you to make sure you are in alignment with your vision. Are you just running a race just to run it? Are you running it to make sure that you're reaching a destination that is where you really want to go? Because I can tell you, sometimes you find yourself in a place and you're like, hmm, this isn't what I thought it would be. And so Brilliant is three days of giving you space to check in, to ask yourself, am I dreaming big enough? I was recently at my mastermind event with my community and one of the speakers who's going to be at Brilliant, her name is Dana Jacoby. She asked us what we would do with $200 million. What would you do in your business right now with $200 million? I gotta be honest. I've never asked myself that question before. I never imagined having $200 million to spend. Getting asked those types of questions, reframe your thinking, reframe your vision, make you think of a different possibility. And that's what Brilliant is. Brilliant is an opportunity for you to bust open this box that you think you live in. By the way, there is no box, right? There's a box we created for ourselves and ask yourself, like, what is really possible for me? You know, where am I letting fear come in and take over what is, what is truly possible for my life? So that's the first ROI of Brilliant is helping you create a brighter vision, a bigger dream for your life. And that is day one. It's dream it. Like, what are you doing? What is the vision? What is your five year, 10 year vision? I won't say plan because I don't have one either. But where do you want to go and giving you space to play? Because I guarantee you're not doing that at home. I guarantee you're not doing that. Number two at Brilliant is really live it. That's day two. And we're going to talk about how are you using your time every day? How are you living into really building this dream? Because sometimes we have a vision, but then what we're doing day to day isn't lining up with what that looks like. So how are you using your time? How are you building your team? Do you have a marketing plan? Do you have an enrollment strategy? What is your financial plan? How are you going to generate and keep 
wealth as we head into this recession. These conversations you're not going to get on social media, right? These conversations are going to be in the brilliant room with experts that have generated and sold companies for millions of dollars and are going to teach you what it takes to really maintain and keep wealth during these times. Again, I said it earlier and I want to reiterate that more millionaires and billionaires are made during an economic downturn. There's also a lot of businesses that go under. Which side of the fence do you want to be on? So day two at Brilliant is really about living it. So day one is dreaming it. What are you doing to step into that greater vision for your life? Asking you that $200 million question, right? Day two is really living it. How are you getting the support that you need to live into that dream? And then day three is be it. Who do you need to become to be able to bring in the multi eight figure business, to lead a team, to start that nonprofit, to be, you know, the, the go-to celebrity expert. And that's what day three really is. We talk a lot about money because I don't think as women, we talk about money enough. And I think it's one of the biggest detriments to our success is that guys will talk about money all day. But women, we don't talk about money because we weren't taught to. And I'm, I'm changing that conversation. I want to talk about money. I lost it all. And I remember for so long, my story was I can make it, but I can't keep it. And I had to really work on reframing that story and creating a different story that I can make money, I can keep money, and I can reinvest that money. And so we're going to talk about different ways right now that you can diversify your income that you can really truly like how are you showing up in your space right to be seen be known and be paid for your brilliance so this isn't a event where you're going to come and learn video strategy although of course i talk about that but really it's a much bigger deeper conversation about how you can create the most brilliant inspired life and business possible there is a, not another event like this out there and we only have a few in-person seats left and we do have virtual tickets as well. So if you wanna go check out the incredible speaker lineup and you know, give yourself this amazing life-changing gift, I encourage you to go to thebrilliantevent.com. I can promise you this, if you give yourself the space and the gift to show up in person, you will leave a different person than you came. Thank you for being with me. Thank you so much for being a part of the Inspired Living family and the community. It means so much to me to help you thrive, not just through a recession, but throughout your life and to help you generate the freedom, the autonomy and the wealth that you went into business for in the first place. Running a business is not easy, but it's so, so worth it when you're doing something that you love and you're able right, to generate wealth and put it back into causes and people that matter. That is Inspired Living. I hope to see you September 12th through the 14th at the Brilliant Event. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me personally through any of the social media channels. I hang out on Instagram a whole lot, or you can reach out to my team at hello at inspiredliving.tv. Much love, God bless, and I will talk to you soon. You've just heard another uplifting episode of Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast. I hope you loved it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you'd like to know more about Inspired Living or to get your hands on many of our awesome free resources, such as the Be Studio Ready Guide, simply visit us at inspiredliving.tv forward slash podcast. Remember, your vision is your destiny, and we're here to help you bring it to life. Join me again next week for another extraordinary episode.